Hey, it's Alex Williams of the New Stack. Welcome to the New Stack Makers, a podcast where we talk about application development, deployment, and management at scale. Hey, it's Alex Williams of the New Stack. And back at Capital One House, we were here last year and decided to come by and and see what was happening. And there was just a discussion about trust and platforms. And I'm here with Naveed Amwar, who is with Capital One. Naveed, this question of trust is one that we follow quite a bit at the New Stack. And it really comes down to thinking about how we're starting to see a lot of different intersections between you know, emerging technologies, values, and the discussions that come with that and how you approach your business, and how you approach organizing your own teams. I'm curious about how you think about trusted platform from the technology architecture perspective. You know, when you're actually building these technologies and finding people who can who, who can be on your team who fit the values that you're trying to develop. You know, um, first and foremost, uh, for us, uh, it starts at it's it starts in the building blocks. And when I talk about building blocks, it's like how you actually establish your teams. Uh, it's a team uh, in a very collaborative uh, structure where we have designers, architects, uh, engineers, and product managers all sitting uh, together and looking at the end game that we're trying to go after and what are we trying to build for our customers. Uh, when you can uh, kind of like chart that out, then it's about how do you break it down into sizable chunks um, and achieve the goal uh, in a manner in which you can start collaborating and trusting each other internally, knowing that the, the thing that you're solving for is to bring customer value. And when you actually bring that platform out, are you doing it in a transparent manner? So when you're trying to do that in a transparent manner, when you're trying to build these you know, build these blocks and you're, and you're having these small teams work together, who are you looking for as part of those teams? Who, what, are, what are the... What are the values that you're trying to you know, build in your team that you want to see in the people who are part of those teams themselves? Uh, the biggest one for us is debate, decide, and deliver, uh, which is everything is debatable, but once a decision has been made, you got to deliver on that decision, right? Like it's not to go and reopen back those decisions uh, because uh, the opportunity of making mistakes is always there, and we actually uh, celebrate mistakes because uh, through that, there's a huge learning experience. Uh, so uh, there's a team lead uh, in these uh, discussions, and that team leader will actually make sure that everyone's opinion is heard, uh, and everyone's given an opportunity to speak up their mind. And once you've actually spoken up your mind, made up your point, uh, we make a decision, and then we move forward in implementing the decision of uh, that sprint that we had agreed on. How are you trying to find people who can fit into these teams, you know, who can actually you know, thrive in these different roles, there's so many traditional means that we've seen follow, but, but there's such a huge, large community of people who may be from the margin, so to speak, those people who are maybe not necessarily have had all the, the opportunities that other people have had. So look, uh, uh, it goes into the way that we actually have a talent pipeline, right? Like the way that we actually go out uh, and look into our communities. I mean, believe it or not, there are a lot of people who actually started working us within the community who have seen the transparency that we brought in, have wanting a job at Capital One. Um, a prime example of that is Lorinda Brandon, who is a well-known person out in the industry, uh, is now working with us at Capital One. Uh, before that, uh, she was a well-known person in the community and was giving us feedback. Uh, look at someone like James Higginbotham, right? Like he's, he's someone who's well-known in the API industry uh, and wanting to come and work with Capital One because they look at us and uh, see that we are trying to make a difference and do it in a manner which is collaborative, which at times is not seen across the industry. So how are you seeing that emerge in the platform architectures of themselves? Uh, the way that you see that is like, uh, uh, these people are embedded into the communities that sometimes we don't actually get an opportunity to go and read upon. How do you actually look at what's changing in the industry? How do you actually keep up with that? And can we actually be a step ahead uh, of our competitors uh, in a manner of kind of uh, adhering to standards, right? Like uh, when we were initially looking at our API architecture, uh, what is available from an open source perspective and are we embedding those open source technologies and what are we actually building and then making it back available to the community uh, that they can actually utilize and build upon? Right, so, so then you're thinking about choices you can make, right? And choices that give you that opportunity to, to move ahead you know, according to, you know, the standards that you really are looking to follow. So what are some of those stand forward moments that 
uh, you've seen materialize with the team that you put together? Uh, for me, the first and foremost is that our customer is always right, right? Uh, uh, you got to take that feedback and always have a loop in which you can get and hear about customer uh, empathy as well as customer feedback. Um, you cannot build a product and release it out into the marketplace and think that it's just going to succeed by itself. How are you actually going to market it? Who are you actually building it for? What's the value that you're bringing to them? Why should they actually give them, give you the time? We answer all of those questions for us before we actually take it to the marketplace. So some of that homebook is done for us. So what is that technology architecture that you've built with this platform then that represents that? What are some of the components of it? Are you running, you know, for example, how are you thinking about that in, in the context of microservices? Look, everything for us, uh, uh, as, as, as uh, I spoke to you, Alex, a couple of years ago, uh, is broken down into an API mindset first. S complex uh, processes are broken down into smaller microservices so that they can actually be self-contained and those experiences can be at any given time uh, be taken out from a bigger architecture and then made available externally. Uh, so when you build an architecture which is componentized, uh, when you build it out in a way which you can have several building blocks which can actually build in experiences, you kind of end up in a situation where you have a lot of Lego blocks right. that can create different kind of experiences and that's, that's what we strive for when we're actually building internal technology. So what are you looking at going forward now? Because now we're seeing, you know, we're seeing container uh, native platforms emerging. We're starting to see AWS starting to invest more in some things like Fargate, right? The Lambda's not exactly an application development environment anymore, really. It's more, it's great for like processing lots of data through it. But the, but the architectures that are being used are using container native environments, and I think you're starting to see that from AWS. How's that affecting your thinking going forward about the platform you're developing with trust in mind? Well, <laughs> uh, one example of that would be is like, uh, there are experiences that our, our customers are already utilizing and are available um, in different applications, be that a web experience, be that uh, in a mobile experience. How can we actually embed our experience to build a better customer experience for uh, those people who are already in those areas, so that is one aspect of it. It's not all about always having people come to Capital One. It's about us being in the presence of where our customers are already utilizing and getting the value chain and, and being part of that value chain. Okay, so with that value chain then, and thinking about it, I mean, are, are you running, are you looking more towards cloud services? I mean, you're moving, are you moving, are you guys moving more toward AWS as a platform? Or are you looking, you know, what are the values that you're thinking about in that context? I mean, or are you, you know, or do you want to move your application development architecture, just keep it internally with those API? Look, uh, it's 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 not uh, a secret. Capital One is what the first company which is moving towards the cloud of, uh, from a banking industry, uh, and we keep looking at any of our new services that are being built. Uh, they're built on the public cloud, and uh, we make sure uh, that the extensibility and this uh, kind of like uh, scale that we have by deploying these services in the cloud. Uh, uh, we, we gain uh, by working with uh, Amazon uh, as a partner and multiple other cloud partners as well. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's what we focus on. Are you using container-based, are, are you developing container-based environments for, for microservices? Yes, we are. And are you using Kubernetes? I'm sorry? Are you using Kubernetes? I wouldn't be able to comment on that. One. Okay, so, but you have to use some container management environments, yes. so you're looking at those and what those might be. Yes. Okay, great. So. So then in terms of trust and security kind of with those container-based environments, what are some of the new challenges that a bank faces with that, with that in mind? <laughs> Anytime you have to uh, bring a new technology, it comes with its own challenges. So uh, we're constantly looking at uh, in ways in which we can keep the experiences safe and secure and anticipate uh, uh, kind of like uh, the gotchas that uh, you comes with uh, when you implement uh, a container-based service or a new standard that you're implementing. Uh, and it starts with the basic thing of having people be educated on it, having people trained on it, and then having people to be able to create those experiences internally first before we exp expose them externally. Are you trying to be, you know, a lot about security though in the, in the, in the context with, with platforms such as, you know, that you're seeing emerge from, that are built on top of or orchestration environments, is the really need to bake it in entirely from like the beginning, so it's entirely, you know, so it's part of the whole kind of the environment itself, because there's so much constant overlap with these multiple different types of microservices, you know, I, I know you don't want to probably talk about your technology itself and how it's using, but what are you seeing out there? What are some of the different approaches that you're seeing that you're, that you're at least looking at? 
Uh, that's not my area of expertise, so I wouldn't be able to comment on that. Okay. Well, this is about trust, and so I thought you might be able to comment on that, that a little bit, but that's all right. So in terms of other things, you know, where, where, where do you see the platform going forward, you know, with kind of like, you know, and, and what are container architectures going to be able to bring you with those architect, you know, you know to bring these, this platform move forward in, in new kinds of ways that, that does outlast it's, uh, the, your competitors? Look, I mean, it's, uh, it's all about uh, extending um, our services, right? Like uh, when we launched here in two years ago, uh, we only had a few APIs which were talking about how to uh, able to get credit card transactions uh, or able to uh, use um, identity as a service. Uh, since then, we have actually looked into customer transactions. We've looked into how to open up a bank account. We're looking into ways uh, in which we can actually extend uh, our merchant's uh, experience. Uh, so those kind of partners who are coming and having conversations with us are actually dictating in areas that we should be present in. So uh, we're, we're trying to be technology agnostic uh, in that regard and create an experience with, uh, with partners and we're looking at all kinds of new technologies that we can actually uh, incorporate in our platform experience. What open source communities do you guys contribute to actively? Where, are you like, where, are you, where would you say some are like the communities where you're really active in your participation? Uh, so uh, plenty of them uh, in the cloud area. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, we have about 27 projects, our own open source projects uh, that are uh, people are contributing to. As such, uh, Capital One is not going and contributing back into an open source community. We have actually made open source uh, projects available, and we have seen. But the you don't contribute back in. We, we have individual engineers who are actually contributing back uh, into the open source uh, communities on their own time. On their own time. On their own time. Uh, but you don't but have people like building out. You don't have people participating in the build out of platforms. Uh, that might be we, open we, source we and then being used as a platform. We encourage the, our engineers to spend time doing that, and the, it's up choose, to them. It's though. up to them if they choose to. Uh, they're doing that. Why do you guys choose that approach as it's, opposed to just like there's a lot of companies who have a concerted <laughs> effort building, putting big teams on projects. It's uh, it's uh, the whole uh, when you work in a regulated environment, there are certain things yeah. that you, it prevents you to right. actually go back and put your name in. It comes down to a platform that you can actually trust. When when you work with an open source community, no one actually one person can uh, maintains the code. Right. It's a community that's maintaining a code. So with a brand like Capital One, uh, you want to entrust something uh, where you can at least control some of those parameters. And in an open source community, uh, those uh, parameters are controlled by the open community. So what I might think is trustworthy might not be trustworthy for someone else. So it's, it's, it's a debate that you can actually get into. Nivi, thank you so much for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. It's good to see you again here at Capital One. Oh, glad to house. see you over here. Yeah. And hopefully you're enjoying South by Southwest as oh, yeah. we are always. Yeah. And uh, you know, always good to talk to you, Alex. Good to talk to you. Thanks. Listen to more episodes of the New Stack Makers at the newstack.io slash podcast. Please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.